If you want a comforting family style meal at home, you have to try my dad's vegetarian hot pot. This is the perfect healthy option for when you need a break from all those heavy holiday feasts. With your choice of ingredients and just a little prep, you can have your own Chinese style hot pot meal right at home. Cheers. First, my dad will show you how he makes the tastiest vegetarian soup base. First, we'll cut the ginger into slices. We'll cut the onion in half, then angle the knife to cut it into wedges. We'll first cut the daikon radish in half lengthwise. Then cut into thick slices about three quarters to one inch thick. With the daikon chopped, we're done prepping the four soup base ingredients ginger, onion, carrot, and daikon. Now we'll prepare the rest of the ingredients that we'll cook in the soup base. We'll cut the stems into narrow strips so they cook faster. Then we'll slice the leafy parts lengthwise a few times. We have all of these ingredients listed on our blog at madewithlao.com, along with step-by-step -step instructions and video clips to guide you as you make the recipe at home. Since lotus root is quite hard, we'll slice it thinly, about an eighth of an inch thick. We'll set these aside to soak. With the middle parts of the bok choy, we'll chop them lengthwise into fours so that each piece will be bite sized and quick to cook. In Cantonese, hot pot is often called da bin lo, which literally means hit the side of a stove. It also goes by fo wo in Cantonese or huo guo in Mandarin, a language I've been studying using Rosetta Stone, the partner of today's video for an upcoming bucket list trip. Sometime soon, I want to take my whole family to China on a heritage trip so that we can all experience the culture my parents grew up in. I actually did this a few years ago with just my dad, but because I only speak Cantonese, I hated not being able to talk to anyone in Mandarin. Now, with Rosetta Stone, I get to familiarize myself with Mandarin with immersive 10 minute lessons that prepare me for real life scenarios during our China trip. It's great because I can use their app on the go, and they have a nifty pronunciation trainer to give me real time feedback on my accents and tones. Rosetta Stone is running a Black Friday deal now until December 4th, where instead of $399, you'll get lifetime access to all 25 languages for $149. That's over 60% off in savings. Not only can you learn Mandarin, you can also learn Korean and Japanese and Spanish and so many other languages at any time for life. Click on the link in our description to take advantage of this exclusive Black Friday deal, which also makes for a great holiday gift, and start speaking a new language today with Rosetta stone. We'll trim off just the ends of the seafood mushrooms. My dad drains the sliced lotus root that I've been soaking and sets it aside. Now we'll soak the seafood mushrooms too. We'll let them soak for about five minutes, then move on to the fresh shiitake mushrooms. We'll cut the stems off with shears. We'll add the stems so they can soak as well. With the tofu, we'll cut open the package and let the liquid drain out. Then my dad likes to quickly rinse the tofu before he cuts it. 
First, he cuts in two thirds lengthwise, then rotates 90 degrees and cuts into seven equal parts, resulting in 21 rectangular pieces of tofu. We'll pour the warm water in with the dried vermicelli to soften it. We'll let it soak for 10 to 15 minutes. After five minutes of soaking, we can drain the seafood mushrooms and set them aside. After soaking for five minutes, we'll do a quick wash of the shiitake mushrooms and set them aside for cutting. The stems we'll also set aside for later. We'll cut each mushroom into three. How do you estimate the amount of meat or vegetables you need with the number of guests? If you do want meat in your hot pot, we have a series of detailed videos on how to choose and cut meat for hot pot, as well as how to make homemade fish balls. We'll have them linked in the description below. After finishing the sauce, we'll switch out the cutting board for a large wok to start the soup base. First, we'll add in the ginger. We'll stir fry until it's fragrant or about a minute. Next, we'll add the onions and stir fry for about a minute. Then we'll add the carrots and the mushroom stems we had set aside earlier. We'll stir fry for about 30 to 40 seconds, then add the daikon. We'll stir fry with the daikon for about a minute, tossing to mix everything if you're able to. We'll add in cooking wine and toss. Speaking of feasts, we're launching a new guide on how to cook the most epic nine course feasts for the holidays, just like my dad. From shopping, prep, to cooking, you'll master the entire process of making nine dishes at once in our new step-by-step -step course, The Cantonese Feast. If you want a beginner's guide to cooking the best holiday dinner your family's ever had, we're running a 50% off pre-sale now through Monday at club.maywithlao.com feast. Click the link in our description to learn more. <laughs> We'll bring it to a boil, then let it simmer for 10 minutes. Alright, 
Now we'll carefully pour out our soup and ingredients into this hot pot with a divider. Here's the gear you'll need to have a great hot pot experience. First, you'll need a pot. We use this hot pot specific one with a divider in the middle, which is a great way to have two different kinds of soup bases. If you don't need two sides, you can use a wide wok like this or any other pot would work too. Next, a stove. It's common to use a portable butane or propane stove like this. Just make sure to have some extra cans of fuel ready to switch in and if eating inside, ventilate the space since they do give off fumes. An alternative would be a portable electric stove. If it's induction, confirm that your cookware will work with it. Apparently, it's also possible to use a rice cooker or instant pot for hot pot. If you're able to control the heat, then it should work just as well, but the lid and the depth of the pot may make it a bit more difficult for everyone to reach in. Lastly, for utensils, you'll need chopsticks for everyone. Some people prefer to have two pairs, one for cooking and one for eating. You'll also need slotted ladles to get ingredients without the soup. Ideally, one per person. <laughs> To season the soup, we'll add half a teaspoon of salt on each side and one teaspoon of sugar on each side. My dad adds a bit more hot water on one side here because there was too little soup. Then we'll mix in the seasonings and cover to let it cook for another five minutes. After five minutes, we'll uncover and start adding stuff, starting with chili sauce. Now we'll start adding ingredients to each side, starting with the lotus root. We'll follow it with some tofu. Then some shiitake mushrooms. Then some fried tofu puffs. Next, we'll adjust the stems of the Napa cabbage. How do you know when ingredients are done cooking or what order to add them in? The advantage of an all vegetarian hot pot is that most, if not all of these ingredients can be eaten raw or undercooked without major health risks. So it's all about preferences and texture here. The ingredients that will take the longest are the hardest, thickest ingredients, which include root vegetables like daikon, carrot, and potato, as well as thick stalks of vegetables. Those may take anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Next, regular tofu and mushrooms will take a medium amount of time from three to five minutes, depending on the size of the pieces. You can always poke through a mushroom to see if it's soft enough to your liking. Lastly, the vast majority of the rest of the ingredients are ready as soon as they soften or wilt, about a minute of cooking or less. These include any thin leafy greens like spinach or baby bok choy, fried tofu, and fresh noodles. If you're cooking meat, a general rule of thumb for thinly sliced meat is that it's ready once it's lost any sort of warmer or reddish colors. While cooking everything, you'll want to make sure to monitor the temperature so that it maintains a simmer. If you add in a bunch of ingredients, you'll likely need to turn up the heat and cover the pot so that it can boil again. But remember to turn it back down when it does. If you have a constant rolling boil, on a high heat, the soup will evaporate too quickly and you'll need to constantly add water to maintain the soup level. Now we can have a preview tasting of tonight's dinner. Mm. Finally, my dad adds some bok choy for a splash of bright green before we all dig in. YouTube thinks you'll like this recipe next. Let's see if they're right. A huge thank you to our walk stars and all of our chefs in the Kanto Cooking Club.